Hey everybody, this is Zeddy's Reptiles and today we're going to be talking about why you are not a rescue and you need to stop claiming to be. So really there's two topics that we need to discuss. Number one is people who are claiming to rescue a said reptile. And number two is people who are claiming to be a reptile rescue. And the point of this video isn't to make anybody feel bad or, or to hurt anybody's feelings. It just needs to be brought to the attention of people who may be newer to the reptile world who may not know any better or people who may not be looking at the whole picture of what it means to actually rescue a reptile or be a reptile rescue and which I do feel is a very important distinction to make not only when you're dealing with a rescue but also when you're looking for your next pet reptile. So let's jump right into number one, people who are claiming to rescue a reptile. So in my opinion, I do believe in 99% of situations, if you are purchasing a reptile, you are not rescuing a reptile. Primarily what I'm talking about and what I see online quite frequently is people who are going to their local pet stores or their local Facebook rehoming sites, purchasing a rehomed reptile or purchasing a reptile from a pet store and calling that a rescue. So let's talk about pet stores real quick. There are Unfortunately, is a lot of pet stores that don't have their reptiles in proper enclosures. Maybe they don't have proper UVB, maybe they don't have proper heat, lighting, food, etc. The list goes on forever. But here's the thing that we really need to consider. If you walk into that pet store and you see this crested gecko that's in an enclosure that's too small, it's got a heat lamp that shouldn't be there, the humidity's at 20%, I get it. I completely understand. You want to grab that crested gecko. You want to take it home and give it the proper care that it needs and let it live its best life. But here's the problem with that. When you purchase that reptile, you're supporting the business. You're supporting them treating their animals in this fashion. You're supporting them getting another crested gecko and immediately replacing it with the one that you just bought. And the only way that we can effectively work against the improper treatment of these reptiles is to stop buying them. And yes, if you want to make the case that you are rescuing that particular reptile to give it a better home, I understand. But big picture is that you are only supporting the business and how they're treating their animals. And with that being the case, the better option would be to talk to your local humane society, make a report on the business, generally calling the corporate headquarters isn't going to get you very far and it is a little bit difficult to go to local authorities because they probably don't know what treatment they should be receiving they might not know the longevity of how long these reptiles are kept in these enclosures but by far the absolute worst thing you can do is support them in doing what you're trying to effectively stop them from doing. And I'm not here to say that all pet stores don't give the proper care to their animals. I know several pet stores that absolutely do. They give high care to their reptiles. They treat them as if they were their own proper enclosures. Uh, now, not all of them are gonna be the minimum requirements because they technically are temporary enclosures for them to be transported to their new home, which I don't technically agree with, but it's better than a lot of the larger pet stores that you may see around who could have these reptiles for six months in this tiny enclosure with completely improper care with the employees not knowing anything about the animals. Don't be irrational toward the employees. They might not know any better. They may not have been trained appropriately and it's not their fault that the corporation is treating their animals this way. And we might as well just jump into the second point and that's people that are claiming to be a rescue. And the reason why I think it's so important to discuss this is that you actually have legitimate rescues and sanctuaries that need your help, my help, everyone in the reptile community's help to stay afloat. And these rescues are 501Cs, which means they are nonprofits, and they specifically rely on donations and adoption fees to keep their head above water. It is very important that you take a look, see who your local reptile sanctuary, reptile rescues are, and just keep them in mind for the next time that you might want to help out your local reptile community. But be aware of the people that are online claiming to be a rescue that are not really 
a reptile rescue or sanctuary. One thing that you can do is ask them for their 501c documentation. And if they are a legitimate rescue, they will absolutely provide you with the documentation to show that they are a nonprofit. And if they are unwilling to do so, that's your number one red flag. Now, the reason I have such a problem with this is that people claim to be a rescue. They are not a nonprofit. They are simply getting rehomed reptiles and flipping them for a bigger profit. Whereas your legitimate rescues are intaking a bunch of reptiles that, you know, maybe the previous owner couldn't care for them. Maybe they're suffering from a disease or illness that they couldn't care for. I think most notably is bearded dragons and MBD. You see them everywhere throughout every sanctuary and reptile rescue. And quite honestly, I find it quite disgusting that people would claim to be a reptile rescue and take away from those who legitimately dedicate their life to rehabilitating reptiles and creating a safe environment for people to relinquish their pets with no questions asked. Not everybody who goes to a rescue has a pet that's been abused or has a disease or illness. Sometimes they just can't care for the pet. They can admit that to themselves and it doesn't mean that they don't care about it. They just need to find it better care. And then you have the people who are just claiming to be a rescue because they got a bunch of rehomed animals that they're trying to make a few bucks off. And they can give you some sob story about how they rescued this animal from here, this animal from here. They're only looking for an excessive adoption fee of X amount of dollars. And you think you're doing the right thing by adopting this animal that's been rescued out of, out of this bad situation when in fact it could just be an animal that they got off of the rehoming site that somebody just wanted to get rid of. And realistically, you could have done much better by going to this reptile sanctuary or legitimate rescue, helping them out by adopting from them. And the proceeds of that adoption fee alternatively are going to go back to the reptile rescue and help other animals that may need it. Let's just hit on red flags real quick. Number one, not showing you 501c documentation showing that they are in fact a nonprofit. Number two, posting on Facebook, looking for free reptiles. That is the biggest red flag that you will possibly see because you won't see rescues asking for free reptiles. They are there to help. They are not there to make money off of reptiles that people want to move. Just be cautious on who you're dealing with and make sure it's going to the right place. Even further, if you actually want to help and donate to these rescues, absolutely make sure that this is a legitimate rescue and sanctuary and not just somebody who's flipping reptiles that you're donating your hard-earned money to try to make a difference and it's really just lining somebody's pockets. But I also think it is important to remember that there are people out there who are legitimately just trying to help and make a difference and might call themselves a rescue and they're not flipping the reptiles, but they do need to understand that there are things that they need to do as a prerequisite to become a rescue instead of just posting on Facebook. So they might have the best of intentions, they just might not be executing it in the best fashion. So with all that said, I just wanna leave you guys with support your local reptile rescues. They absolutely need it. They live on donations. If you can spare even a few dollars once a month, every couple months, it'll really go a long way to helping them stay afloat. And if you're considering a new reptile, definitely consider adopting from a reptile rescue. Like I said, not all of their reptiles are suffering from some illness or disease. Sometimes it's just that they had to be surrendered and they're a perfectly healthy reptile. They just need a new home. And then you'll be killing two birds with one stone by helping the rescue, by giving this surrendered animal the home it deserves, as well as supporting them with an adoption fee that'll go toward more animals in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.